in the last video, we set up a function called test that will go through and pretty much add a new entry to our data table using our add server entry procedure that we've created in MySQL. So what we want to do now is create a database interface class or model that will go through and pretty much have a bunch of overloaded post functions to uh, kind of do this stuff for us in a cleaner way. So they will just take in different parameters. So based on the parameter that it takes in, it's going, that's going to dictate the procedure that it takes, essentially. So for this one, being server data, this one's obviously going to call add server entry. For one called update server entry, for example, that one would have a different function because it would only be you know, updating certain things like the server name and map name and current slash max players. We don't need to update the IP address or anything like that. For example, that's just an example. I'm not sure how we're going to uh, necessarily identify servers yet. I think I'm just going to generate kind of a random ID for them whenever they get created and return that back to the host. So we can go ahead and get started. Create a new model. So right click on models, add class. I'm going to call this one database interface. So I'm going to take some of this stuff and move it over. So I'm going to make a new MySQL connection and the connection string right here. And these are going to be private. Well, actually, they're going to be inside the function, so it doesn't really matter. So I need to do using mysql.data.mysql client. And then I need to make the constructor. So database interface. And what I want to do is I want to make this public. So I'm going to move it up and do MySQL connection, SQL connection. I'm going to make it private to this class, but it's going to be accessible everywhere in the class. Then move this all into the constructor, like so. So once the class gets created, it will generate the connection string and set up the SQL connection. So whenever we need to make like a post or a get, we simply open and close it. So now let's make a the first function. So it's going to be a public void. Um, let's see here. What do we want to make it? Call it post data. And the parameter that's going to take in is server data. And I'm going to call it data. So I'm going to take everything inside of this try catch block. Well, inside of the try catch and move it into post data. Then I'm going to take all the parameters and set them up to use the passed in information. just like so. So anything we pass into the post data function, it should send um, the information that we well, pass to it into the database. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove this test function and the call that we did to it, like so. And I'm going to change this get back to returning an int and just make it return two. Or, well, it returned a string last time, so value. Just trying to keep it how it was before. We're gonna end up creating our own controller here in a minute anyhow. In the next video, 
Okay, so we have that. And what I'm thinking for doing for the server ID is I think I'm going to have it completely generate its own ID, just going to be a completely random number. And that's going to be the kind of like the accessor for that specific server. So whenever we want to go ahead and access the server from the database, all we have to do is search for that server ID and we have access to all the information that we're going to be pulling from it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I want to make this return an integer instead. And for now, I'm just going to return zero or make it return negative one for the exception. So that way I can always test if it's bad or not. And here for now, let's just make a return 999. All right. So now what we can do is in our values controller, we're going to go to post. We're going to change the parameter. It's going to be the object. So server data, data. Well, actually, let's create a new controller for this, actually. So under controllers, right click, add controller. And this one's going to be, let's see, what's the default? Uh, MVC5 controller with read write actions. No, Web API 2 controller with read write actions. And hit add. And let's call it. Um, Post. Uh, let's see, it will be a good name. Yeah, we're just going to do host controller. And now inside of post, we can change the parameter to be server data data and what we're going to do is create a new database interface so database interface db equals new database interface then db dot post data and what we want to send in is data okay, what's wrong with you okay, keep public There you go. So for testing, I want to take data dot server name, set it equal to this is a test server name. And give it a shot. So I'm going to run it. Looking right at this, it's API forward slash host. So I'm going to do a post. Actually, I can just modify this to equal the uh, same. So let's do that real quick. So we have server ID, IP address, server name, current players. We're going to move map name. Map name is right under server name. Then we're going to do max players. Set that equal to 5. Change it from values to host. And that will be our post request. So it's API forward slash host. API forward slash host. And let's, yeah, let's send. Although I did overwrite that. All right, so now in our database, hit refresh. All right, we're failing somewhere, so let's do Change values to upper or lowercase. I'm not sure if that matters. It may. Oh, wait, derp.
I'm gonna go ahead and go to create a breakpoint. Right here. Whenever we go to create it. And see if it even hits it. Okay, so it is in fact hitting it. So that contains all of the correct info. So it's just not, oh, so now it posts to the uh, database. Not sure why that was. Right, so now let's try it again. Change server ID to three. And hello all for the server name. And hit send. I want to refresh. Server ID three, server name, hello all. And we're now able to send the uh, pretty much a JSON message with all of the information that we have in our class for server data and have it be sent right to our SQL database and added to the table. So we are now able to easily send custom data and this will be useful for when we go to host servers inside of Unreal Engine. So all we have to do is construct the uh, JSON object Make the HTTP request and send it to our web API, and it should handle everything else on its own. So now that that's out of the way, I'm just going to remove that. We are good to go and continue. So I'll see you in the next one.